So what you're looking at is this is my uh, Tesla coil. It's been running for about 40 minutes now on the same offset. So I just want to show you a couple things. Let's go in and take a closer look right now. We are at 40 volts. And here's the uh, offset right here. I'll show you what it actually is in here in a little bit. As you can see, I just have a little fan connected right here to it. And just on a heat sink. Cool to the touch. That's cool to the touch. We have minimal breakout at the top. In my case, that's good. I just want to see that it's lighting things up. As you can see, right behind it, we're all lit up. So let's go ahead and let's take it to the dark and let's see it. And then I'll push this thing the rest of the way. I believe I only have, what, 50 volts in this thing. Maybe 60. So there we go. We'll set the camera right there. So let's take a look real quick. Get out my tape measure. There we go, we need some light. And right about eight inches right there. Breaks down. So what we're getting here is we're getting eight inches that it's really bright. And then at about 20 inches is when it breaks down. And as you can see the lights behind it, we're still glowing. See right there, we pick it up. So right now for our grabby flyer, this is actually really good. We have a consistent voltage on here. We have a consistent distance. We're actually making good progress here. This circuit's going to last probably what? It's already 45 minutes or so, 30, 45 minutes, man. We are going to last for hours on this circuit without any problem. Now, as you see, it's just a MOSFET hooked up. I don't have any diode protection on it. Uh, I have one resistor on it. Again, I'll, it will show a schematic here. Let's go ahead and light this up. Now, the one bad thing is it does heat up when you get over 40 volts. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what more we can get out of it. So you can see our breakout increase. Also our distance double. Way further out right over here. The mop set is red hot. But, let's see. So, let's go ahead and let's turn it back on to about 40. Let's see if it cooled down yet. Okay, we're good to go. That only took a few seconds. It got real hot real fast, but then it went down real fast. So, I just need another fan in there if I want to run it at the higher voltage because there's 10 amps in this thing. So I would say normally 5 amps is good, 10 amps is pushing it. Uh, and, but another fan, I might be able to pull it off bigger uh, piece of a chunk of aluminum right there. It would probably be just fine. Let's go ahead and let's turn it back up to 40. Not a problem whatsoever. Huh, funny though. Doesn't like to be on down there, but right here it looks just fine. You see we got a little bit of breakout. Interesting. 
Yeah, they still work. All right, so everything's off. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the circuit. Okay, here we go. Here's our breakdown of how this works. I'll walk you through it so we understand it. First of all, here is the part number right here. 2SA1962. Okay, it is max 230 volts 15 amps so we got a pretty good one here okay i ran it at 40 volts and 8 amps and that's for 45 minutes without it breaking down so we're doing good there now here's a little breakdown on this here's our power source all we got to do on our dc power source let's write that on there dc a negative goes right over here to a 47k ohm resistor okay that same resistor goes off and goes to the bottom of the number one coil and then the resistor itself connects right over here now this MOSFET is right here with the writing on it so it would be 2SA1962 right there so as you see the writing on it, this is the exact way that it connects. So you see that'll go right over here to the top of the number one coil. Let's go ahead and take a look here. This pin here that also connects the resistor, but it goes before the resistor right here. goes to the bottom of the main coil, which is the number two coil. So that big coil right there, that goes to the bottom of it. And that's this end here. Now the last end of it here will go here to our positive right here on our DC power source. Now you can use whatever you want as your power source. I just use the simple power source here. There's what it is. There's the brand Dork. Uh, we are looking at output at 36 volts well I guess we were running at 10 amps but we had our voltage down but that's what it says anyway I still stick by the 8 I don't think it pushed out 10 anyway here's a little fan thing here let's go ahead and take a look at it this is just a small little fan you can find on Amazon I'll link you to a pack of them anyway it keeps this thing real cool you can get a piece of metal whatever you want what I would suggest is a CPU cooler, and I'll go ahead and put that in there. You have to drill and tap it, but it's going to be way better. Anyway, this is just kind of show you the setup here. Here's our coil. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, is it five? Yeah, five. One, two, three, four, five turns on it. Guys, this is just a uh, wire from a wall. Look, look, that's all it is. Yeah, I did a bad solder job, but that's okay. It's working, man. And this is AWG28 on here. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many turns. I'd have to test it to find you exactly that number. But as you can see, it works out. I just grabbed a coil. I had random on the shelf to put this together. But, uh, no, it, it turns out well. And on these fans, by the way, if you do end up using them, you only need two wires out of it, the ground and the positive. The other one is data and something else. You don't need it. PWM, I think it was. Anyway, there, I'll go ahead and take a picture of this. And then I'll also take a, a picture of the uh, actual MOSFET and the breakdown of it. So you can get a little more into it if you want to. Other than that, that's pretty much what it is. Okay, one more time. This is the schematic that I wrote for this. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Let's go ahead and move on to our uh, data sheet here. Take a screenshot of this. This is uh, also really cool. Gives you all the breakdown of it, what kind of uh, offset it is, things like that. Uh, that way you can look it up in case you want to learn more about it. 
Okay, this right here is our mop sets right here. I'll leave a link for these parts in the description from Amazon. One thing, guys, I get a little bit of kickback on when you buy things through the ad link. So if you want to help support the channel, please buy it through there. Otherwise, this is what it is. You can uh, go ahead and look it up on Amazon, but I will leave the link in the description. Also, this is the resistor right here. Pretty simple. You probably might have one at home if you built something like this. Uh, this right here is the CPU cooler. Now, again, you'll have to drill and tap it, but you're going to get a way better result on the cooling factor because it was meant to cool things like this uh, or heavy uh, CP, CPUs, I mean. So, anyway, that's it. If you like the other setup, uh, here's the fans right here. Uh, they blow really good. I use these on my 3D printer uh, when I build a standalone on it. So, it works really good. And the actual heat seek I used in this video, I just got it off the scrap pile. So any one you can find usually works. Generally, the bigger the better. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.